Well, we have uh, two healthy sons, Brandon and Matthew, who are teenagers now. And um, in 2002, we found out we were expecting a third child. Very, very excited. And um, I had a few miscarriages prior to that, so I was a little apprehensive. But So we had very, very good doctors and very good medical care. Um, had a very healthy pregnancy, made it through my first trimester. I was like, hooray, you know, I'm fine. I got into my second trimester. Pregnancy was going very well. Uh, it was December, right before, about a week before Christmas. Uh, so I remember it was December 16th, uh, 2002. I had an um, appointment to see my doctor, but hadn't been, been feeling all that great a couple of days prior to that. Um, so I was really determined to see the doctor. Went in there. Uh, we we're getting ready to uh, go to Disney World for Christmas to spend our Christmas vacation there with the boys and uh, parents. Very excited about that. So it was uh, good timing, I guess, to go see the doctor. And when I walked in there, the doctor said everything looked great, except when she wanted to um, take the baby's heartbeat. Um, she couldn't see a heartbeat. And uh, she asked me if I'd been feeling OK. And I said, you know, I hadn't felt that great the last couple of days. And uh, she said, you know what, I don't want us to jump to any conclusion. Let's just uh, go have a sonogram done. So she sent me over, um, the next building over, to have a sonogram done. And I was laying there on the table. A sonographer came in and um, did the sonogram. And she didn't say anything to me. I said, is my baby OK? She goes, well, she said, I'm not going to tell you anything. You, get it. you need to go back and see your doctor. So I knew something was wrong. I said, is my baby OK? She goes, I can't tell you that. Go see your doctor now. So I walked across to the next building. And um, when I walked into the office, um, the nurse, the office manager, and my doctor was at the door uh, greeting me. And they walked me into the office, so I knew that it was bad news. And um, the doctor just broke down. And she said to me, I'm so sorry. Your baby died. And I said, what do you mean my baby died? I, I got through my first trimester, and I'm fine. And you don't have miscarriages or anything like that. She goes, no, your baby's what we call stillborn. You, you're going to have to go into the hospital and deliver your baby right away. Um, and um, I, I was just in a complete state of shock. I had no idea what to do. My whole world at that point had come crashing down. And it, just, it was just horrible. And um, from that was the beginning of just some major changes in my life, really because um, I never really had anything quite so traumatic happen to me. And so I was really just in a complete state of shock. I called um, Antonio, my husband, and called my friend. And they met me at home. I drove home. And um, soon after that, um, we had friends and family just coming in from everywhere um, well, as soon as they found out what had happened. Thereafter, I became very numb, I think, because I, I was in so much pain. Um, I just sort of, um, I guess, entered my own world. It was like a world of total darkness. I, I didn't know what to do, or you know, what to expect and what it was going to be like. Um, the next day, um, I was we went into the hospital and I was induced, and I had to go through the process of delivering this baby, precious baby, and um, I wasn't prepared for this. I didn't know what to expect. Um, once again, in a complete state of shock. Uh, thankfully, I'd read that book, so I kind of knew what was coming. And um, had a nurse that had um, helped me um, uh, get everything together at the hospital. And she gave me a lot of information about um, what it would feel like, what the baby would look like, and what I was allowed to do, what I was not allowed to do. Um, and so I kind of went through that, um, just sort of, I was numb at one point, and then I went through a whole lot of emotions. I would just, just cry um, nonstop, and then I would laugh and joke because it, with my friends who were with, with me. And uh, one of the, for me, I guess the way I got through that whole experience was with, of course, my wonderful husband and uh, my family and amazing, amazing friends in our church. And of course, my faith in God, you know, that was ultimately what it was that carried me through that experience. Um, I went through the motions of being in labor and right about midnight, delivered this baby. A 
completely lifeless baby who looked absolutely perfect. And it was just heartbreaking uh, because I would never get to bring this baby home. I would never get to do all that I wanted to do with this baby, you know, and never really get to be his mom except at that point, you know, and the few months that he had um, spent in my womb. And um, uh, it was interesting because a wonderful nurse that was there when we had first um, checked into the hospital um, had left, you know, because uh, it was the end of her shift and a new nurse had come in. She was a lovely lady. Unfortunately, I don't think she knew too much about stillbirth or what the mother goes through. I know they had a sign outside my door that said, you know, stillbirth mother, um, you know, please be quiet. And they try to keep a lot of babies away from that floor and just sort of, um, um, you know, to just help me. And, um, but when Brady, a son was born around midnight, um, the nurse had no idea what to do. I mean, at one point I was in just extreme pain, you know, paper pain. Obviously hadn't had an epidural at that point because they didn't expect me to go into labor so fast. And uh, I, when the baby came out, it just came flying out. And um, the nurse had no idea what to do. My doctor, who was in the hospital, had been called to do an emergency C-section, so she wasn't able to be there with me at that point. So there I was, lying there with my lifeless baby, just between my legs, and I had no idea what to do. I didn't know what, whether I could touch him, whether I could hold him. I had no idea what to do. And the nurse was just running up and down the hallway because she was just mortified. And so I, it was just one of those experiences that uh, you never really forget and you never ever want to go through. Um, soon after, about an hour later, our doctor came in and some other nurses came in and they were able to take the baby, cut the umbilical cord. Um, and then I was able to say goodbye. And um, I was just in shock at that point, complete shock, and just didn't know what to do. And then they brought in papers for me to sign, for us to sign, really, about what to do with the body. And I said, what body? You know, I wasn't even thinking clearly. And they said, your baby's body. You know, what, what would you like for us to do? I was like, wow, I, I have no idea. I really have no idea. And um, they were nice enough to let us know that we can take care of that later. But for me to just get through all that I was going through at that point. So that was our experience in terms of having Brady. Um, and soon after, um, I had to go through surgery the next day as well because my placenta wouldn't come out. Um, thereafter, when I got home, I just remember being completely numb. Um, I felt like someone had ripped my heart out. That day, December 17th, 2002, my life really changed forever. Um, and um, I, I think I became a different person at that point. Um, I had, um, I was just very blessed because of, um, you know, once again, my faith in God and um, my friends and family, amazing family, my wonderful husband, just helping and walking us through this. I don't think my friends and family left me alone um, by myself other than to go and have a shower for probably three weeks. They were always with me. Someone was always with me, talking to me. Uh, we're laughing, joking, crying, you know, just, just going through the a roller coaster of emotions. And it was Christmas, so it was really, really hard. So the hospital released the baby's body to us, and to a funeral home, actually. And we were trying to, actually, Antonio was trying to decide what funeral home to go with. And we had not dealt with this before. We had not had this experience before. So that, in itself, was just a harrowing experience because funeral homes want so much money to be able to take the baby and and we just wanted the baby cremated we didn't want a coffin or anything because he was premature he was so little and we did not want to go through that process we just wanted him uh, cremated so we could have him entered and, and then we got to collect the cremains and have Brady entered uh, a year later actually at a cemetery right down the street he was the first baby in the baby section um, and so we have a marker there so we get to go and visit him on his birthday or uh, I was determined to make sure that people had uh, 
the right information, you know, the, because there are so many people that go through stillbirth. I hadn't heard about stillbirth until I went through it. And later when I started looking into it and talking to doctors and talking to people, uh, it was amazing. There were so many, many people that would walk up and tell me about their experiences. Um, and I remember <clears throat> a few weeks after my experience, just getting on my knees and crying out to God, saying, why would you allow me to go through something like this? Why? Why? couldn't I have this baby? Why? And I just remember feeling that I, it felt like he was letting me know that it was because I was going to make a difference. Somehow I was going to reach out and help. And the only way I could help people in this area is by having gone through it. Because it's very, it's something that's very hard to understand until you've actually walked, walked down that path. And so that was our experience with Brady. And uh, I got an opportunity to work with a number of different groups and work with a lot of mothers and try to help them in whatever way I could. Um, I'm just a very upbeat person, so I don't really share my emotions a whole lot. I do that musically more so than just when I'm talking to somebody. And so it's interesting in some of the groups that I've been to, I co-facilitated um, a group with um, uh, for, um, I guess, loss of babies uh, at our church uh, with this amazing lady who had been through some horrific losses in her life. And she would ask me if I would help her out, and I said I would love to. And so it was actually therapy for me as well. And uh, it's amazing that the moms that we met there that we were able to work with. And uh, I remember some of the moms would walk up to me and say, are you sure you went through stillbirth because you're way too happy to be? someone who's been through this. I said, you know, just because I've been through this experience doesn't make me this really sad person. I am who I am. You know, this experience is part of my life. My pain is, for the most part, very private. I express it in ways that I feel comfortable expressing it. But just because I've been through this doesn't mean that I need to walk around, you know, you know teary-eyed and depressed because I have two beautiful children. I have a family. I have friends. I have so much to live for. But yet, this, this is a very painful experience. I'm going to talk about it, but you know what? I'm going to live my life, too. Um, on the flip side, it's interesting. Um, soon after my experience, my ki uh, our kids were really little then. And uh, I, was, I remember after the Christmas break, taking them back to school and walking in. A lot of the moms, it was interesting. They just, as soon as they saw me, they had no idea how to react. And they just kind of like walked away. Like, they were afraid to come up to me and say hello. <clears throat> some were, excuse me, some were bold enough to come and say hello. Others just nodded and just kind of almost ran down the hallway. Cause it, and at that point, I felt like, um, you know, the character from The Scarlet Letter by Nathaniel uh, Hawthorne, you know, the woman, the scarlet woman here, it's like, here, here comes the scarlet woman, you know. It was like something was wrong with me, and so people were running away. They didn't know how to deal with it. Um, others would just come and hug and say, oh, you'll be fine, you'll get over this. And I remember I was just really haunted by that experience. It was horrible because it makes you feeling really empty and you don't know what, you, you feel like you've done something wrong, that uh, you, you almost feel like you're a bad omen or something like that. And I, I just remember walking out of school just, you know, with teary eyed, just not knowing what to do, feeling really empty. And I ran into this other mom, and um, uh, she was asking me how our Christmas break was. And I said, oh, it was great. And then, she, and then I said, it was fine, but I, I lost my baby to still. But she goes, you know, I noticed that you're not pregnant in me. I said, yes. And uh, she goes, I am so sorry. And she reached out to me, and then she goes, you know, my first baby was stillborn. And I looked at her, and I said, how do you go through this? And she goes, you know what? You learn to live day by day. You'll never, ever forget what you've been through. It will always be a part of you. Your baby will always be a part of you. But you will learn how to live with the pain. And that will come with time. And those words were just, that's exactly what I needed to hear that day. And I think about that all the time. And that's what really helps me sort of to get through knowing that, you know what? Yeah. You know, it's an I learned to live with it each day.